Okay, so uh, today we're going to demonstrate AWS Outposts running with Pure Storage FlashBlade. And to do that, I will be also demonstrating Vertica Eon mode running in the AWS Outpost. I have a number of Ansible scripts that will be used to create a Vertica POC environment and then run some load against that system. And that's what I'll be demonstrating during this video. Okay, so here we have our AWS outpost. It's actually a AI focused outpost with some G4 DN instances. And right now I have you know a bunch of that G4 DN capacity available, and that's what I'll be using to do this demonstration. Um, in addition, up here on code.purestorage.com, if you click the database button, you'll see that we have some Vertica code. And clicking here, we can go to the Vertica repo on GitHub. So this repo has a number of different examples, and that's what we're going to be using for this video and demonstration. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is launch some instances. And we can launch instances on AWS Outpost simply by going to the Launch Instance button on the Outposts page. And we need to use that rather than the regular EC2 dashboard so that we can launch the instances on Outpost. I'm going to select the Amazon Linux and um, I'm gonna select the G4DN. I have a bunch of these instances in this outpost and um, Vertica has some advanced machine learning algorithms that can take advantage of GPUs. So let's use these. I'm gonna configure the instance details. Now, the thing that I'm going to do is create four of these instances. And for the, that's because I'm going to have one management console instance and then three instances that are my Vertica nodes. And here's the magic. It's really super simple. The only thing I need to do to use my outpost is select the network to be in the outpost VPC that automatically selects the subnet. I am going to disable public IP addresses because I want to just keep this entirely inside my network and makes this a little bit more secure, gives me a little bit more elbow room. And I will have it auto assign IP addresses for the network. Now I'm going to go and add storage. The G4DN instances have ephemeral storage, and we are going to have 225 gigabytes of NVMe SSD. So it's ephemeral. What I'm also going to do is assign 512 GB of the general purpose SSD storage class, and it'll give me a bunch of IOPS that I can use for catalogs and you know just make everything a little bit faster. Um, I'm going to skip through adding tags right now, although if I was launching these instances one by one, I would generally give them a name over here to make things a little easier. When I configure a security group, what I'm going to do is select a pre-existing group that I have for Vertica, it opens up various ports that Vertica cares about. Plus, for here, I enable um, basically ICMP ping. And now I'm going to review and launch. Um, the main thing that I'd want to do is check the security rules and the storage. I'm all good. So now let's hit launch. And I'm going to select my keys that I have for Outpost and launch the instances. That's about it. Now, at this point, the instances are launching. It'll take them a few minutes to get up and running. The instances are running, but they're still initializing. While that's going on, what I'm gonna do is just sort these by IP address and then assign them names. And I'm gonna call this thing, you know, Vertica MC. That's going to be my management console VM. This one is going to be Vertica node one, Vertica node two, and Vertica node three. Cool. So now I've named these. Oh, 
let's go and fix that up to make it consistent. I've named the nodes and um, I have assigned IP addresses. I need to put them into my, my VM that I'll be using to manage this so that I can, you know, use the names, do IP resolution. I just need to remember these IP addresses. So 117, 131, 137, and 157. One of the things that I have is Etsy host, and I'm running DNS mask on this system so that I can use it for IP resolution. And um, I'm going to go and edit these instances definitions, and I will put in the IP addresses that I cared about that I recorded earlier. So 117 is the MC, 37 is my node 2, and 157 is node 3. Let's tidy these up. I'm going to save this. And then I'm going to restart DNS mask so that I can look them up, right? So now if I do something like dig outposts MC, I can see it in DNS. Great. And um, at this point, what I need to do is figure out where to get the code. So now I go back to this GitHub location and let me grab this URL. If I go to this Vertica POC section, this is what we'll be following. There's a setup sequence that is in the readme file. So essentially what we need to do is create a SSH config that lets us access this and references the right keys. And then we're going to make sure we have Git and then clone that repository. Right. Okay, so going back to this VM, if I One of the things that I have over here is an entry for outposts. And uh, for now, I'm going to comment out the root user and re-enable the EC2 user. Right. And now that I have this configured, what we can do is clone our repository. And to do that, we can simply copy this command. And now if I go CD into Vertica, and then Vertica POC, I have a bunch of this code. And part of the code that I have is this open root script which will let me enable root login for the, the host. So today, if I, or right now, if I SSH to outposts MC, I get in, but I am EC2 user. I wanna run this as root just because it makes a lot of this other stuff easier. Um, and I'm going to unlock root access for all of those hosts, especially for setting up uh, Vertica. It, it ends up being easier. So I will exit for now and then run the open root script. So if I go back here, it says edit open root. Um, I am going to use Emacs here. and just verify the information at the top of the file. So it has a pointer to my correct key. The OS user right now is EC2 user. The machine that is the MC is called Outposts MC. And then the prefix assigned to my Vertica nodes is Outpost node. 
All right, and then the the script will do what it needs to do. All right, so I'm going to exit here and run the outpost open root script. Okay, so now it, it ran, it accessed those nodes. And at this point, if I SSH into outposts MC, ah, it's still going in as EC2. So now I need to Again, uncomment this and comment this. And if I SSH uh, to outpost MC, now I'm root. Okay, so this all worked. And now I can go back to the next step. Okay, so the next step is to finish setting up our new management console node, which will essentially act as a jump box to help set up the remaining three Vertica nodes and itself. Uh, to do that, we need to copy some files over to the outpost MC node. And we can use essentially this code to do it, but we need to do it from a location that has all of those files. I have a bunch of these files here. So I'm going to essentially just paste this command in here so that I can transfer the files to the destination. Okay. Now on the MC node, the other thing that I want to do is make sure that a copy of my keys is available on the node itself. So I'm going to go and copy that. Okay, so now I've copied the keys and um, they should be available on the MC node. So if I go to my MC node next, as it says, right, we want to SSH. Want to SSH onto the MC. Okay. And now if I take a look at temp, I see that my binaries are there. And if I take a look at SSH, I see that my keys are there. So this is set up to that point. Now what I want to do is install git. Um, now we need to clone <clears throat> the repo that we're using onto this MC node. And then CD into Vertica, Vertica POC. And we have the same repository we had before. Um, <clears throat> now let's copy the temp files into the right locations in the Ansible playbook. Okay, so now the file should be from that we um, upload it should be from temp into the right location. And now we need to edit the Vertica POC prep file. If I go back here and edit that file, one of the things that you'll be able to see is that there are these settings and for this outpost demo, I'm going to keep these the same. But what I do need to do is change this FlashBlade API key. This is what's used to access the FlashBlade. And, um, you know, that is different for FlashBlade to FlashBlade. I don't necessarily want to give it away. So I'm going to go and get that key now. 
but that's essentially what I'll put in here. And now I can look at the other stuff. The main information here that you might need to change is whether these are virtual nodes and Outpost will use virtual instances, what the interfaces are for a private, public, and data network. Here, there's only one interface, so we're going to use the same one there. Where to get extra packages, since we are running essentially CentOS 7 or like a variant of CentOS 7 with Amazon Linux 2, we're going to just use the Fedora URI. Um, the depot size to use. Now for depot, <clears throat> I'm going to use the ephemeral storage since we have it. And it's 225 gigs. So I'm going to set depot to be about 200 gigs. The OS username is EC2 user. Um, and then we're going to create a database user called DB admin. And um, that's about it. Now, the other stuff we need to do is set up the node locations and um, IP addresses for those nodes. And to do that, we can go back to you know, our list of IP addresses, which were 131, 137, and 157. We don't have any secondary hosts. And then we have our management and data IP addresses for the flash blade. So I need to, you know, look up what those are. I can go back to my root thing. And I see that management is 195.11 and data is 194.11. Okay, so I have IP addresses for my nodes and my flash blade. Now I have some configuration options for how to run this test. Um, I'm going to leave them all enabled. When you're running with ephemeral storage, it's important to keep the pause check enabled. Um, so that definitely needs to be a yes. The other ones are kind of optional. Right. And at this point, I shouldn't have to modify anything else. So I'm going to save this file and exit, All right? So we've essentially gone through this section of the playbook already. And then we set the execution options. Now at this point, okay. So the next step is to run the actual Ansible playbook that sets up the POC environment. You have to source the prep script that we just modified, then validate that the variables in the all.yaml file are what you want it to be. Um, run the Ansible playbook and then configure the GUI access. So the first step is to source the prep script. Again, we need to source it because it'll set a bunch of environment variables that then get picked up by the Ansible playbook. And um, all of that stuff will come in here. If you want to see what the script does, you could read through this. But that's the next step. So let's go over here. We have the prep script already prepared. And we can run source vertica poc prep right so this is going to set up um, a bunch of configuration on the management console host and um, you know then prepare the nodes as well
So first thing it's doing is installing a bunch of packages that will be useful. And this will take a little while to run, you know, somewhere on the order of about five minutes. Now it's installing Ansible using Python and it's installing it inside of a virtual environment that keeps things clean and self-contained. And it gives us a virtual environment that we can come back to if we need to, you know, exit, reboot, do whatever is there. So this is setting up a bunch of firewall rules right now. And the reason we're going to be using firewall D is so that we can also use it to do NAT translation and that the MC node can act as a gateway to the other nodes. So installed some packages. Now it validated that Ansible is working. Now it's using Ansible to set up a bunch of stuff on the different Vertica worker nodes. It's validating the DNS lookup from the MC node is working. And uh, once that's all set up, it'll start setting up NTP so that you can use the MC node for time lookup and to synchronize all the nodes against the management console server. This is really meant to be generic for POC environments where we don't necessarily have a ton of control over everything. So we're kind of subsuming necessary functions. And you could see from the output here that all the time is synchronized and all the nodes have the same timestamp. So at this point, we're done. One of the things that I want to point out is we are inside of a virtual environment that's called POCN. Now, if you're not familiar with Python VN environments, the way you exit to a regular environment is you just run deactivate. And then to activate it again, you would want to, again, source POCVN bin activate. And that's how you activate the virtual environment. OK, so um, the next step is to go and validate that the variables set inside this all.yaml file are what we want them to be. And, you know, mostly it's just setting the right versions. And um, that should be straightforward. If you don't know, just use whatever's in the GitHub repo. They should be relatively recent. But, you know, let's just check this out. So we can Emacs group bars all.yaml. And we see that there's a bunch of stuff that's set up here. But, um, you know, there are packages that get installed. You can see what, you know, the Vertica DBA password is going to be Vertica $1 sign by default. A uh, bunch of packages that get installed. But then for Golang, we're going to go with version 116.5 for S5CMD version 121. We're going to be using the beta 5 version of the Rapid File Toolkit. And we're going to be using the 10.1.1 versions of Vertica and the Management Console. So that's pretty much it. The only other stuff you might want to look at is the playbook will set up an example uh, VMARC database. And this one is aimed to be, I believe, um, like 100 gigabytes in size. Um, not sure. It's either 100 gigabytes or a terabyte. And to do that, you need a certain kind of number of rows for these tables. If you want them to be significantly smaller, you can change the sizes over here. But that's pretty much it, right? Um, if this all looks good, then you're done. Exit. And you should be ready to run the actual playbook next. OK, so the next thing we do is run the actual playbook. If you go back to the readme file, it's essentially just running this command. So if you're inside the virtual env environment, just paste this command, and it should be good to go. Um, you know what? Before we run this, let's just take a look at what the host.ini file looks like. It gets generated automatically by the prep script. And essentially what it does is it lists your primary nodes, secondary nodes, and then 
what variables to use for access, including a SSH key that gets generated as part of the script. So that's pretty much all it is. And now we're going to run the playbook. First thing it does is it goes and sets up access to the flash blade because it's going to need to create some access keys. You know, plus it'll also create an NFS share if it doesn't exist, connect it to all the nodes. Every, if everything looks good, then you hit control C and then C to continue on to the next step. Now, at this point, if you were not using ephemeral storage, you would just hit control C and C. But since we want to enable ephemeral storage on those nodes, what we're going to do is run that ephemeral storage script. And um, to do that, I'm going to go back into that environment, right? So let me create a new session. I'm going to SSH into this outposts MC, go into Vertica, Vertica POC, activate my virtual environment. Okay, and now let's take a look at this outposts ephemeral script, right? Um, essentially what it does is it um, sets up a script that will configure and format the ephemeral storage with XFS. And then it'll create a service, a system D service that will get run every time the machine boots. Um, so to do that, let's exit here. And, you know, again, if we take a look at the comments at the top, Essentially, what we need to do is run this command. On the Vertica nodes. And then we run this command. So the first command copies the script onto the nodes. This command actually executes that script on all the different nodes. Cool. And then finally, the last command validates that it's mounted by doing a DF. OK, so now I have the ephemeral storage mounted on home DB admin depot across all of my Vertica nodes. and. I can exit and go back to my window. And at this point, I can hit Control C and C to continue running. Now, the next thing that happens is we're going to run some of the vperf tools, so like vcpu perf, vio perf, vnet perf, and this takes a while to run. So I'm going to stop the recording here and come back when it's all done, and we can look at some of the performance results. Okay, so the benchmark stuff has finished running, and um, the performance data has been gathered into a directory that's in here. Let's just log in from another window and take a quick look. Okay, so if we look here, there's now this vperf reports. And if we look inside, there are a bunch of different reports that were generated. So like, for example, we could take a look at the vcpu perf for node, for node 1. 
and we see how many seconds it took to run and the high and low load times being good. So, you know, this is uh, saying the CPUs are pretty solid. Now we could take a look at the V netperf. And um, again, what we're seeing is on the UDP side, we're peaking out at about 430 megabytes a second. On the TCP side, we're peaking out somewhere around 1,200 megabytes per second for the throughput between the different nodes. So, you know, pretty darn fast. Um, and then if we take a look at the local storage, okay, so the local storage side, we are seeing somewhere on the order of you know, call it like 19 megabytes per second per core for writes and 40 for reads and about 5,400 IOPS for the random IO. So again, you know, it's it hits the minimums over here, um, but, you know, not super exciting. And this is on depot. So this is actually using the NVMe ephemeral storage that we set up earlier. And then if we take a look at the VIO perf NFS, what we're seeing is actually substantially higher throughput. So we're seeing around 47 megabytes a second per core for the, um, the writes, you know, probably closer to 60, 62 megabytes a second combined for reads and writes for rewrites, 44 for the reads. And then for IOPS, we're seeing somewhere on the order of like 1200 IOPS per core, you know, total about 1500 IOPS for the server. If I go into the GUI and take a look at the, my dashboard here, actually it ran a little while ago. Um, we could see that part of the performance for that test was here. And we're hitting writes, you know, somewhere right around like 1.1 gigabytes a second for writes, similar for reads. And um, this is essentially tied in to the network bandwidth that we have available right now between the instances and the flash blade. Cool, so that's that's the performance. And now let's go back here and uh, continue to the next step of the playbook. Okay, so the database is created, and now we've gotten to the point where we're going to run the VMART data generator script. So, you know, one of the options was to automatically create and populate a VMART database and run some queries as sort of a proof of function and a benchmark of sorts. So right now we're generating about 100 gigabytes worth of VMART data that we will then load into the database and um, run some queries again. So this is gonna take a little while. And at this point, I'm gonna pause the recording and we'll pick up after the VMART queries have been run. Okay, so now the VMART example has completed. If I sort of scroll back over here, we could see that we, we generated the data and uh, we loaded it in parallel. Yeah, so here we generated the data set we requested. I have a script that will do a parallel load across all the different nodes. So we loaded the data and we see that it's loaded and then we ran the queries and the queries succeeded from all the different nodes. So we know that it worked. So now what we can do is continue on to the next play, which is setting up the management console.
So um, at this point, everything should be up and running. I'm going to go into my workstation here. Like, um, I take a look. If we look at the historical performance, we see that during this section, this is sort of when we were doing the VMART. This is the VMART data being generated. This is it being read, um, read back essentially, written out and loaded into the database. And then here we're running some queries, right? So if we sort of break this up into NFS traffic and S3 traffic, we can kind of see the different access patterns and, and phases. Now um, we're going to go to the management console port. And now that it's up and running, we're going to set this up. And while that's happening, if we go back over here to the README under Vertica POCs, toward the bottom, one of the things that it talks about is configuring the management GUI. And once that's up and running, what we're going to need to do is find the API key. And we can do that by running this command on the data node. Right, so here is a copy of the TMUX session. I'm going to go to the data node and paste the command. And now this is the API key that I'm going to have to put in to import the database that I already created. Let's see. OK, nice. So now our Vertica Management Console is up. We're going to authenticate with what we configured before. Great. So now we're in here. And the next step is to import the database. So we're going to need the IP address of that first node. So here it's. Actually, no. Different address space. Okay, so we pasted in the key, and we're going to call this outpost cluster and we need to put in the credentials for our user and now click import. Okay, so we've successfully imported that cluster and we go and view our database. You see there's a bunch of work that's already been run during our queries. We go to manage it. We see we have a single subcluster with these nodes. If we take a look at the database, we see that these are our three nodes that are up and running. Okay, now let's check out our communal storage. And what we see is, you know, we've configured depot and we have our communal storage subscriptions across the different nodes. Communal depot storage is there and our S3 path is vertica prod, vertica DB, you know, 
today we're using somewhere around 33.7 gigabytes of that storage. And that is after the Vertica compression on the 100 gigabyte VMART database that we created. So that's about it. If we go back to our Ansible playbook, we can say control CC and now we're done. So we've completed this play and we're ready to use this on Outpost using FlashBlade S3 as communal storage. That's it, that's the demo and what I wanted to show in terms of how it works. Thank you.